sort of bad. <laughs> Greetings and welcome to Die Dragon Die presents the Grimstone Chronicles Season 4, Episode 24 of Downtime. <laughs> <laughs> I am your host, Marty, joined by a two-thirds of the Ontario crew. Adam will join in a little bit. How uh, is everyone on this fine Monday? Excellent. Yeah, we're playing on a Monday because uh, uh, Christmas Eve is a Saturday, and then New Year's Eve is, is a Saturday. So yeah. it kind of, the holidays have interrupted our regular gaming time. <laughs> get, get some gaming in while we can. Yeah, exactly. And then Ahmed is flying out to uh, Egypt later this week. So we'll get a quick game in tonight. I might even get to the end of downtime tonight, depending on... We're getting to the end of downtime! Depending on what you guys do. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. traveling tomorrow. Okay, if Adam wants to, get to everything do any adventuring, your characters have to go, no. no. <laughs> 15th level. <laughs> Eight level spells or whatever. Spells, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ahmed, you're traveling? Yeah, he's just trying to get everything done. Yep. Um, <laughs> stressful, but looking forward to it. Should be fun, right? Cool. All right, why don't we do a recap of what happened last game. Um, King of the Doors is what it was called. The Steel Rose Expeditionary League enters the Plane of Fire and meets a duo of servants of Jamal the Emissary. They discover that a large group of enemy commanders have congregated at Jamal's compound along the banks of the Great River of Magma, across from the, uh, from the megalopolis that is the City of Brass. Thelgrim's magical bullet leads the party to the heart of the burning woods, where they treat with a sphinx and a group of azers who escape slavery from the city of Brass. The party is ambushed by a strange pair of green dragons before returning to Volcanica. Brenos questions Lord Varric. Thelgrim converts to the religion of Vulcan. Brenos seeks out the forbidden and hidden war of the Dwarvish Book of Kings. Quintessa has disturbing visions and communes with her goddess, Weejas, whilst at the astral portal in the Mountain Root Temple which apparently, instead of just receiving yes-no answers, got to chat with one of the proxies of her deity, or a servant of her deity. Yeah, that was a, that was a thing that happened. Um, there were a lot of details of what, why, the whys and the, and the consequences of those actions. Uh, you'll have to watch the episode to get all of those juicy little bits. Uh, I think we left off with... Uh, ending the 13th week of winter uh, in the city of Overlook, so what you see on the map. Uh, the Parliament of Clans has met, and they have elected their first replacement lord, Lord Varric, has become the first, uh, the first being a, uh, an election like this, um, the favorite uh, amongst the, the Dwarven clans. Uh, it's likely due to his recent actions, his wealth, and his, uh, uh, the strings that he pulls as leader of the League of Guilds. Uh, we're going into the next uh, week. Oh, when Cog, when you met with your master and you told them that you, yeah, let, let's let's go back to that scene for a second. Let's have a conversation there. I, I kind of okay. want to know what what Cog says. I'm going to go to the conversation layer and try to find tokens. Hey, look, there he is. And there's a Cog. So, Cog, you got one of the wizards to teleport you back and forth to the Greystone Citadel, uh, where yeah. you track down Xerth Exalus Exalian, uh, the leader of the small group, of, small but very confident group of Gitzere that have now come to Volcanica because of the recent Git Yankee uh, uh, activities. The attacks, yeah. And, and you blowing the planner whistle. Yeah, when we ran into their general lich. <laughs> They, yeah, they held their end for, they, they held on for a while until we showed up. So. Okay, you find Great. the Zerth nearby, uh, he might have been chatting with the spirits of the uh, of the former master of the temple. You do see that there are a couple of Gasseri that are monitoring the Starfield screen. Good. Um, yeah, you, you find them meditating, basically, outside. Yeah. Master. Yes, Matthias. I'm sorry to interrupt your meditation, but I um, we we just recently came from a scouting mission in the Plane of Fire, and um, we've located where the general and many of the Githyanki are, along with their allies, preparing 
preparing for, well, preparing the army. We do not know when they'll move. We do have eyes and uh, we will inform, uh, we will be informed of uh, their movements if they do start taking it, you know, moving towards us. Um, uh, the group I'm with is planning on making an attack at some point, but not not for a few weeks. We're still preparing our own. Um, we're still making preparations of uh, ourselves. But uh, I wanted to inform you of that of their whereabouts, and that the general has has indeed returned already uh, with his uh, dragon. It will not have taken long for the general to have reconstituted. Right. Um, Master, is um, this general is very difficult to deal with. When I don't I, I don't know how many resources we, we his his equipment was quite powerful and we secured it. And our craft, I believe, has taken it apart already. But but um, which which will raise no ire from the witch. <laughs> sure. The general while his equipment may seem mighty to you, with the resources that the Githyanki have from raiding many worlds over thousands of years, and the hoarding of the previous Githyanki queen, his equipment will likely be expendable and replaced. Then this is the thing. It is general, alive with, with fresh equipment. He is not. If it, uh, sorry, um, active with fresh equipment, once destroyed, will return again. Finding this lich's phylactery is, is difficult. We presume it's with, it's where the queen would have controlled them. That's where we presume. But what if there's some magic to trap this corrupt spirit of his? I, I don't know of any, I've, I've asked my companions they are looking into it, but I, I, I seek your advice as well. If there is a way to keep this corrupt spirit from returning <clears throat> to the phylactery, even for a time being, that would nullify the, his, his actions for, for, for whatever time period that we can. He nods. So uh, we are looking in. We are looking like, into the solutions. Seems like a sound strategy. He doesn't seem to have anything like specific to offer up. Yeah, no, I'm. I don't know what his experience is, where he's gone, what he's seen, what he knows. So throwing it out there, maybe his phylactery is likely well hidden and or well guarded. My best guess is that you could begin tracking it down in the Gitzeri city. But any creature such as yourself wandering around and asking such questions will result in your arrest. While perhaps we need someone to infiltrate it. While the Lich Queen Black Hith was not a god, her power rivaled that of dead gods. She was very <sighs> paranoid. Hmm. The fact that heroes had once infiltrated her domain does not mean that her domain does not still have many traps that lesser heroes would not be able to overcome. I do not wish to spend your potential sending you to the Git Yankee city. Perhaps if we have a, um, I know of one, I don't know what he's doing right now, but we have a, a friendly spy that might be able to do this job. Cog is thinking of his, <laughs> And Dassault. <laughs> Any infiltration of that city would would require either a lot of power or a lot of time. I do not think you are ready for such 
meddling. Hmm. I am not. That's for certain. It is not. It is not my. Uh, it is not my skill set. Many a great Githzare have failed at the very thin. Our numbers are too few to attack the city directly, and their might is is formidable. We are talking about the center of their empire. If you, will. you would find those, an entire army of those who have the same skills as you. Oof. Right, so, so force is not the answer then. It would be a different type of abilities required. I I will seek out I will seek out my previous. Uh... Continue to learn. Your spirit grows, and the powers that I have seen you and your friends wield may be the answer. But striking at the general now in his domain, which is likely to Narath without knowing exactly where it is, is folly. Your strategy, however, of delaying his soul's departure back to his phylactery is a sound one if you could figure out how. Right. I, as for their visit to the fire elemental plane, this is concerning. The, they are gathering there. They get yet, there is, um, they get yet there is... think on the terms of planes. They do not think on the terms of, of individual worlds or countries, although when they do raid and conquer a, a planet, they will think on those terms. There if they a... often make allies with the renegade factions on a planet before they attack the planet itself. Seeing that the general, who is an elder amongst their kind, is treating with what he would deem lesser races in order to meet specific military objectives is not unsurprising. What is of concern is the plane of fire is home to millions of creatures. Powerful ones, yes. They've um, uh, there is a there is a there is a brass or a brass plinth, I believe, in uh, can't remember the city's name. Ahmed can't. Kong probably can. Uh, the, the village of Talar. The village of Talar. So it's in, it's in this direction by this many bird crow flies, <laughs> and uh, it, it is a tuning fork for um, arriving at the um, the plane of fire. And that's what we used. Apologies for the rattling. There's a the furnace is on. So I can't. I can't, okay. <laughs> I can't hear it. Okay. I can't hear. It's like it's like for five minutes of the day it does this. <laughs> oh, it's good, man. It's fine. The, um, <laughs> um, this this does tell us something about the general that he does not have legions at his command, that he is still building. using the resources of Volcanica and nearby enemies against Volcanica. Yeah, see, they're not ready yet. But they are building, they, they, they're forming an army if it's not already formed. And, and on a daily basis, we're keeping tabs on them. Is there a reason why you have not struck? We are still preparing. Our crafter is still crafting, making our equipment more um, efficient, powerful. Then it is wise. You've defeated him once. And there are multiple. It is not just him and his uh, and his army. The politics of the plane of fire means that uh, they will have allies based on where they have aligned themselves. So we'll not only be fighting them; we'll be fighting some of the locals as well. Is this planner gateway to the plane of fire within this Elsia Vale? Yes, I'll, I'll draw it on a map, like. Has your has your wizard Thogrim learned the dimensional lock spell required? Uh, I, we, he, we, he will be training his. Uh, he will be. He told me that he would be training in his um, learning some new spells recent uh, soon. So I assume then he will be 
doing that, yes. And for the sake of the people of the Vale, I would keep that way shut. Yes, we have, um, Thogram has allied himself with a strange sphinx. Uh, this also tells us that the general is being very creative in ways to move troops to Volcanica. You not still, it's not, it's not a gateway from what I understand. You still require the, the plane shift spell. He, he his, his brow furrows. Any get Yankee or get Zeri with their weight can, can cast that spell. Ah. I can't cast, I can't cast this spell. <laughs> <clears throat> um, now I will, I will inform Thorgrim to put this. at ninth level, all get Zeri at ninth level. Ninth level, you're saying? Yeah, they get it as a spell ability. Um, it's a little wow. Weird. Ninth level. Wow. Get Zeri. You're not a real Zeri. <laughs> so then, yes. But if they can gate, they can just gate to anywhere specific on. They can gate to anywhere on Volcanica. They would have to travel afterwards, but. Yeah, I, I mean, it would delay them. I need to check Get the Yankee if they can do that. I don't see. Oh, I just thought of something kind of cool. Like a um, a crafter that yeah. that can almost program spells. Oh, I have to get the into elite, thinking the this later. warriors of the Get the Yankee race can do the snap trick. All right, I'll ask. I'll ask him to. Uh, Th Thorgrim's ally has locked it, uh, as far as I understand. This uh, this uh, cleric type uh, sphinx. So he's locked that position uh, using his magic. So um, we'll make sure to continue doing that. It will slow down their efforts. It will not stop them. Yeah. Yes. Well, we will have we will have a good warning. It is it it would give us at least a day's warning once they start moving. Unless. And I only suggest this if you have the strength. You leave it open. As an ambush point. You leave it open, let half, you, you understand the size of the army, let half of it through, close it, and destroy it. It would be a minor victory. It would delay them. It, it, it has its risks. That city and, would be destroyed, that town would be destroyed. It would occupy your time. Just a thought. We get Zeri are fewer than the get Yankee. We choose our spots for victories. Careful. Like a surgeon would take out the most damaging or the, the root of the problem. It would instead of just destroying the 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 troops it would be best to aim at their generals and up. Should the might of you and your friends who have defeated the general once wish to strike this place, the Kitzere under my command will be with you. We will inform you when we are ready, but we will plan to do it within the next, uh, was it eight weeks? Uh, if you guys are thinking about doing this after you talk with the Imperial Administrator, which is a uh, meeting that is scheduled for the fourth week of spring, uh, you guys five, have six, five seven. weeks to spring and then, so yeah. Four, nine, nine, ten weeks. Within ten weeks or so. Will the generals still be there? I don't know. We will keep tabs on them. So whenever they move to, we'll hopefully be able to track. 
this is your world. I trust that you will make the right choices for it. Mm, I trust we, I hope we survive. That is an objective. <laughs> Unless your death would mean great victory. If it means stopping them, then yes. That is a great victory. That we just pick up your pieces and put you back together. <laughs> the thing that still is unclear is what exactly does the general want? Cog pulls Cog looks at him, pulls his his wrist out and extends the green blade. Ting 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 ting. I believe this is what he seeks. He's already had this comment. He's already he already knows yeah. about this, right? Yeah, he, he looks he looks at the blade. There are easier ways to steal something like this or to or to do a raid than gathering allies and armies. This may be one of his personal objectives. But his true his true reason for being here is not yet well understood. Hmm. Perhaps power? Is I suspect there is something deeper. Hmm. Knowing what your enemy wants will allow you to fight them much more effectively. That's very wise. I'll I'll sorry, master motherfucker <laughs> What do you want? It's the moon to the face Oh you wouldn't be here He, he just nod, he just nods quietly to it's very wise, sorry. <laughs> I, was... it's like, I know, I told you, dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you, Master. I will not take up more of your time. This conversation was enlightening. You. Um, have they put the aspects into the jars to preserve them? The three jars are in this room, unless you took them. No, no, but have they put the aspects into the jars? Uh, the jars are by each of the plinths of rock where the spirits are, so yes. Oh, they're there? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Unless you have the jar, like you have the jar no. Yeah, I think so. No, I left. I, I left them there. If they're gonna be there, I yep. left them there. Yep. If combat's gonna happen, open this one. <laughs> <laughs> he sings well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the plus five bard song is very. Uh... Everywhere in the temple. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. Okay, your your master's right. basically staying here. He does have part of his uh, part of his crew watching the Mount Root Temple, where Quintessa right now is uh, guarding, along with Bao, the the astral portal. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, I need to hang out here and wait for one of the wizards to pick him up. Yeah. What well, are you were supposed to get? Yeah. Oh my god! How far? How, 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 like, how I need a rod of teleport. <laughs> how far? How far is this place from? Uh... Overwatch. It's a good question. Overlook. Let me. It's it's hundreds of miles through the mountain. Let me just save this and I can open up the. Uh... All I'm saying is I can jump really goddamn far. <laughs> well, I can open up the world map because there was a couple of things that I didn't remember or whatever. Uh, let me force you guys there. Do, do, do. All right. So here is Overlook. Mm-hmm. Uh, Talar is along the river here. It's right outside of Brindle. Yep. Case 130 miles? Uh, 60, 120 miles 20. away is, is where Talar is. That's where the smoking tower Talar is. really is just a hot spot. And then yeah. Greystone is way the, the hell up here. Greystone is where? Uh, well, that's where we are. So it, that is one, two, three, four. Five. It's like 300 miles. One, two, through the mountains. Three, four. So that's 60, 240 two, through the mountains. 240. And the way, that, the way that you get there is there's a path that goes down the side of the mountain, and then you'd have to run around the side of the mountains. 
Like this so is a that's direct route uh, through the mountains. One, right. two, three, four, five, six. It's like 360 miles. So how many miles can Cog run in a day? I'm just asking here. So Cog, who doesn't get tired, does not fatigue, and uh, his so move speed your, is uh, his move speed is um, thirty plus. Actually, it's ninety five. Now it's ninety five feet. <laughs> it's ninety five. How did it get to five? It usually goes up by 10. thirty plus forty monk plus ten elf plus. 10 15 feet, from elf. What? Every five levels that an elf has in monk. Oh, get an extra five bonus. feet. Cool. I did not know you had that. That's awesome. Yeah. 90. So in eight hours, 95. you travel 90 miles uh, of in, flat ground. So in uh, three. And not resting because you don't, because you're a construct, you don't get tired. You could travel 270 miles in a day. You. On, on flat ground. You would just be so, this thing of legend on the roads. All these farmers are like, the Tin Man! I saw the Tin Man! <laughs> <laughs> just speed walking across the, <laughs> across the world. Uh, yeah, Cog, you could walk back from Greystone to Overlook in probably uh, days. three days. With a couple of fly spells. To get through difficult parts, yep. So yeah, you, you could, and then you don't breathe, so you're not affected by the uh, the altitude sickness at, at the top of, uh, of where Greystone is. So yeah, you can walk back. Uh, oh, don't it, forget it, the jump. The jumps, jump check. It, it'll take some time. If that's what you're doing, I'm just going to shift your hardening down by one week as you... As sure. Unle unless there's like a... That's fine. You can shift it down. Woe unto the highwaymen that come across the Tin Man. <laughs> That's Travel funny. by foot. Okay, so you cog spending some time basically traveling through places that you guys have beat the crap out of, like, the threats. So during downtime, your travels, it's going to be fine. Or we'll roll for it. But. That's good. Uh, okay, so this was the uh, 13th week. I just wanted to see what Cog had said to his master. The 14th week, agonies up to unknown activities. Uh, <laughs> God damn it, agony! <laughs> Blake has almost finished, done it, uh, finished crafting a whole whack load of scissor wood tree javelins. He's got one more week after this. Cog is on the road, traveling by foot. He doesn't encounter anything that is of significant threat, but he sees something on the countryside. That's nice. It's in the middle of winter too, so it might slow down your travel. So it probably takes like five days through snow and that sort of thing. But yeah, you do you have any survival or knowledge geography? Uh, survival plus nine. Give me a roll. Huzzah! As long as hey guys, I'm a little lost here. Oops. Well, he's following the road, he should be. 48. <laughs> no, no. A, a survival. A survival check or a knowledge check. Oh, sorry. Uh, this, sorry. You're traveling out of mountains, and you're going a route that you've never taken before. 11. Okay. Um. I do ascending. I'm lost. <laughs> you're going to have to use... Oh, so, so, you so, so I... I'm basically saying you spend both of those weeks traveling by foot because you get a little bit lost. Um, <laughs> He's running back and forth. Yeah, like you're, you're in the mountains and it's snowy. You've never been here before. You're like, I know I need to keep on following the mountains south, but you end up in some switchback trails and, and uh, 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 mountain valleys. You get stuck in the, the giant shield mountains. It's all snowy, uh, ash, ash and snow. Uh, yeah, so cogs out wandering, wandering around. Eventually, Sunny will come get you, you realize, but you, you'd you rather not. Um, okay, I can so do was, this. <laughs> that was the week that you met with your master, and then give me another roll as you, you're trying to orient yourself. And <clears throat> You can also spend Mythic because it's... 15! A... No? <laughs> it's 15 enough? <laughs> give me a Mythic. Oh, One. crap. <laughs> 19! Okay, eventually... 
it's slow going. You won't tell them that you uh, that you got lost in a blizzard somewhere and, and that you had to double back three times. And uh, but over the course of eight days, which should have taken you about three or four, uh, you do manage to find your way back to uh, 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 Overlook. Thogrim is doing crafting for Sunny. Uh, the simulacra I've got are researching grave dust grenades from grave dust cartridge. What? What is this? Uh, oh, there are items we I can't remember who had them though. I think. Uh, these were the uh, the Githyanki yes. that oh, had they were throwing grenades at us. Uh, I think they were dispelled. The Githyanki force grenades. I think so. All right. Uh, give me what is it? A knowledge. Uh, engineering or knowledge craft or craft weapons check for your for your uh, uh, for your simulacra. You, they can all aid each other, so they probably ought yeah to. So, yeah yeah they do. Yeah. Uh, okay, so simulacra. How many do we have? We've got six one. Knowledge engineering, you said. Mm -hmm. Or alchemy. Alchemy. Uh, you could also do alchemy. Okay, so 21, and then, so auto-aid. They've got three red and three blue. That's six. So one of them is going to roll, and the other are going to aid. Uh, alchemy is plus 23. So 1d20 plus 23, and six aids is another 12. Uh, 43. Okay. They come to the conclusion and they give they write up a report for Thogrim that the, these weapons are a fusion of uh, a strange technology that they don't understand with um, magical properties. Thogrim's going to have to look into this. Um, they don't have the correct feet and they don't know where or how to learn that feat. There's likely a feat in Pathfinder that allows you to create technolog like high tech equipment. And they they are creatures that don't learn either, so they don't, Yeah, they don't know. They they don't know how to they basically say it's a technology, it's, it's a branch of technology that they don't quite understand. They might be able to create very expensive um, magical variations of this gear, hmm. but this might de defeat the purpose of, like, I'm sure yeah. you could create an 86 force grenade with magic, right? It's mm -hmm. very expensive. Take a couple of levels in Artificer. <clears throat> <laughs> so yeah it, they find it very interesting but okay. they do not have they understand how it works they don't know they understand how to operate the thing they don't yeah know. this does this does this and then there's yeah. something here black box that does something else so we don't know <laughs> what this is yep cool uh, okay and, and it does have quasi bits of magic built into it it's almost like a hybrid of high tech and magic yeah okay, okay. All right, Sonny is doing face punch training with Mistra. Brenos is doing face punch training. Barnabas is in the Tower of Talar writing his PhD in magic. Yep. Eamon is doing face punch training. Uh, the Darbians complete helping Thogrim with paperwork for those uh, for those uh, Vulc uh, Vulcanites. Vulcanins. Vulcans, Vulcans, I guess. It, maybe they just Vulcans. Vulcans, yeah. Why wouldn't it be? Marty, this is, Marty, this is their greeting sign. This is their greeting sign. Oh, we got an Adam, I think. Oh, yeah. All right, it's Blair, like which Adam? Knock his camera around. Pants, pants, pants. Yep. We are, we are oh, God. Pants. And I'll <laughs> Sorry, the Vulcans know. greet you, Adam. Oh, my. I I reject this. 
I whack anybody who does that to me between the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Apologies. Uh, the, uh... No problem. I've got Mark where Adam is and Adam where Mark is. That, that's, that's, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> if he shaves, we're going to look identical. <laughs> I am going to listen a little bit. I haven't eaten, and I'm famished. I've got a pizza here, and I'm going it's okay, to destroy it. Okay, face punch it. training. <laughs> oh, I, oh, fucking! Put the right person. There we go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got I've got this big screen above me, so it's a bit awkward there. Mike's around. Um, yeah. So uh, I watched uh, Heroes of uh, just a. Quick catch up with Adam. I watched Rogue Heroes, of the Renegade Heroes, or whatever. Rogue Heroes. Rogue Heroes. The Rogue Heroes was very good. Uh, the anachronistic 80s, music? 90s, and early 2000s music, like during montages and stuff, was just bang on. It was. I, I was happy with like some ACDC and Pantera and stuff just showing up, being like, "Yeah, well, I can boys, understand you." Know, Fine. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's just fine. <laughs> like when, when they went into the scenes where it's like, oh, it's the uh, the cabaret is going on. That was an acronym. An acronym. No, that was correct music. Yeah. 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 No, that, I yeah. I find that show highly entertaining. Okay, yes. we're we're just going through the uh, 14th week of winter. Uh, Widget has finished his really good upgrade. Perfect. Uh, the thing that you missed last last game, Adam, when you when you dropped off was uh, mm -hmm. we just had an interesting commune with her goddess. Oh, uh, <laughs> was it a use in trouble or? <laughs> You're gonna have to ask Widget for a favor. Yeah, let's let's keep it at that because yeah. the, the next time you get you see her. Um, oh, yeah. there's intrigue. Uh, Quintessa and Bao this this month are preparing a room at the temple for the ghoul to store the ghoul head in. I'm almost debating storing it with, um, like down in the lab, just to distract them. Just to distract your <laughs> yeah. master in the yeah. can. What? <laughs> yeah, you could put the ghoul head there if you wanted to. Just don't touch it. Leave it there. Okay. Um, and then the uh, astral portal is guarded by Quintessa. Like, kind of, she goes back and forth, yeah. I guess. Her and Val can take shifts. Yeah. The Parliament of Clans, Elder Elections. All right, you guys haven't really. Uh, we haven't stuck our thumb on the scales. So. Yep. So the next uh, dwarf that is elected to the council is the rich dwarf lady. Ember. Yeah, give me a second. Yeah. Is she number two or number three? Two. She's number two. Unfortunate. Uh, Naraki Hilda Ember Sunder. From a wealthy clan, hailing from Imperica with holdings on both Imperica and Tarak. Um, and Priestess of the Source Behind the Light. Sorry, uh, holdings on Imperica and Tarak or Volcanica? Uh, tra uh, track. track. Oh, okay. And then obviously she's now. And Volcanica. And Volcanica now, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to mark that down. Uh, Lord Dvarak won the first the first open seat, and Naraki Hilda Ember Center won the second oh, one. Dvarak won the first one? Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Is it? For, <laughs> for Brenos, it's awesome. Brenos goes, yeah, he's, he's dwarvish enough. He's got old. He you know, literally tried to steal your friends. Yeah, but in a very dwarfy way. He did it in a dwarfy way. <laughs> you are neutral. Okay, I'll give it to you. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Uh, the weeks are just going to tick by unless you guys yep. are doing something specific. There are a couple of like loose ends. Like, are you going to talk to the Imperial Administrator? Are you going to wait until the meeting on the 4th about learning about the people that were in the Plane of Fire? Uh... There was, when are you guys, so well, we, I think we, it was decided we, when you were here, Adam, that the uh, the list of things to go do includes raiding the Ghost Lord's Lair for treasure, um, going into the sewers to kick demon ass to get back the Farseer of Rest, and then, if they're still there, attacking the Plane of Fire. Like, these are things that you're going to wait to do until after you've done The Plane of Fire, no quite, yeah, it's, it's all good. We're doing it all after, yeah. Okay. I don't. 
I want my AC better when I have to fight the lich guy on the dragon again. Because <laughs> I'd like yeah. him to at least have to roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's got okay. that that always a chance. No, I just hit you. Week just... four, week fourteen of winter is over. There are eighteen weeks in a season. We're going to the next uh, to the next week. Agony is up to unknown things. Uh, Slake has finished crafting a pile of sisterwood javelins. Uh, next on his task is to upgrade some of his weapons to just adamantine weapons because he's. Could we experiment with one to figure out what the hell it does? Uh, a javelin, you mean? Yeah, the, the javelins, you know, the wizards have sort of looked at it, that it will act like a uh, dispel magic when he strikes with them. Cool. Like a cash level 10 or? Uh, his character level. At, at the time of crafting or? Uh, yep. Okay. Those are awesome. Uh... Cog, after getting lost in the wilderness, finds his way back to. <laughs> back to uh, he decided to run back it. from he the Greystone. He ran back, back, back from Greystone to Overlook, and and it was supposed to only take three days, maybe four or five, through the snow. But he didn't know the way, so he got lost a bit. So he spent he spent like ten days out in the wilderness. <laughs> his mover rate's ninety five. So he's <laughs> quick, but it's he covered a lot of he ground. He quickly yeah. got lost. <laughs> yeah, but he's also not, he, he doesn't get tired. So he, he was on a 45 minute hike and came back three hours later. <laughs> yeah. no, not that way. <laughs> uh, Thogram has completed crafting for Sunny. Beautiful. Uh, his simulacra start the uh, four weeks of rune etching to move a bunch of your runes around. This is, does not include the runes that are on recently captured gear. <clears throat> uh, Sunny completes the face punching training for four weeks with Mistra. Brenos is in the second week of his face punch training. Barnabas is in the third out of five weeks of writing his PhD. Eamon's on the continuous grueling face punch training. <laughs> He's been at face punch training for seven weeks. <laughs> <laughs> He's got three more to go. Apparently he rolled bad for his hit points. Uh, the Darbians have completed uh, helping Thogram and his cult do all their paperwork. I think at this point he's just pretending to face punch train just so Barnabas doesn't pick on him anymore. <laughs> no, I'm hitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> he's out doing, uh, it's, it's basically like uh, endurance training, yeah. that sort of thing. The Darbians um, are idle. Do you have any specific things you want them to do? He's going to send... He's going to send a couple of them to open up the bookshop. Okay. If they get firebomb or acid bomb, so be it. All right. There is the bookshop. So we've got written down here, and I don't know if Widget wants to do this now. Widget research in shadow plane. So Widget wanted to basically... Kind of actually came up with the last conversation. He wants to start finding a shadow controlling artifact like he wants to basically put money or effort towards solving the problem of his home world like yeah and we had that last conversation with barnabas where he came up with some like, some concepts so basically i, I want to go like, my idea was to go to the um the um the illithid merchant and basically like Here's a bunch of money. <laughs> Figure, find one of these things. <laughs> so for, for me, like, doesn't have to acquire it, but tell me how to, like, where I'd have to go get one. You know what I mean? Got it. Okay, so Widget is actually traveling to the Shadow Plane. How how are you getting there? Shadow Walk. Mm -hmm. Shadow Walk. Yeah. Okay. Which is, you end up in the local area of the Umber Forge. And then you're going to the... Um, the shadow broker yep. to ask for information about shadow controlling artifacts. Yes. All right. And how much are you spending? Uh, let me check. I had earmarked 50K, I believe. <coughs> uh, it's been a while. But yeah, I earmarked 50K. You're just dumping 50K going, solve my problem? Well, no, not solve my problem. I'm assuming. 
if I need to steal a god's toothbrush, I'm assuming the if like I'm not expecting them to steal my inf steal the toothbrush for me. I want to know like how to get a toothbrush. <laughs> like, I, I'm assuming I want competent people to help me with this. I want a good plan. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's it's not to solve the problem; it's to give me the information to solve the problem. Like, give me the. Give me the adventure. I want to buy the adventure to go solve the problem. Okay. <laughs> I assume you're not just automatically giving up fifty grand. You're going to negotiate for some for some of this. Yes. Uh, give me a diplomacy check or a bluff or a uh, uh, intimidate, depending on how you're interacting with the shadow broker. Uh, we are going to uh, diplomats the shadow broker. Um, basically, I've, I've got up to 50k to spend on this. Is the uh, sorry, let me pop, let me pop up my chat and find the widget. Uh, <clears throat> and the shadow marker was sh Shabar, Shabar. 39 diplomacy. Shabar. <clears throat> what did you get on your diplomacy? 39. Uh, Spend a mythic point for a 40. Are you looking to buy an item that would allow you to uh, control shadows yourself? Oh, uh, ideally, um, but like lots of them. <laughs> Think armies of them, you know? <laughs> Imagine there's a very big problem with a lot of shadows. We are well aware of the current state of affairs on track. One of the things... And he, he's like, right now you're dealing with thousands of gold pieces. You've yep. paid a thousand, he kind of just flips one of his... Here, I'll force you guys to come out where he is. <laughs> he flips his little tail at the, the pile of gold, like issuing he wants some more. Like, yep. Yeah, we're... <laughs> <laughs> he's got a gold chain. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the bling lord. <laughs> this guy's awesome. I spent uh, like months with this guy. Uh, that was fucking awesome. You and some of the companions you <clears throat> travel with have begun to notice the shadows becoming more organized. Yeah. Do these Your enemy shadows? may already have the things that you want. Just burn this <laughs> well, if I will have my agents and my eyes and ears verify this for 10,000 coins. Okay, uh, he will agree. There is also a great meeting of necromancers and undead. If you'd like to know the location of this, this should be another 5,000 gold pieces. Amongst that number, you may find the answers to control shadows. For that five grand, we'll be getting a location, some names? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you, you pay he, it. He, yep. His tail swipes a bunch of the stuff into. It's it's likely a an urn that has a dimensional magic on it because you don't hear the coins at the bottom of it. He swipes most of them, but his tail is. Yep. Uh, is yeah, it's like uh, widget <laughs> doesn't view the world as Barnabas does. He needs good relations with people. On a long-term basis? <laughs> For some time now, undead and necromancers and those that worship gods of death have been gathering on the plains of Kofrenia and Tarak. They await something. Many of the undead are strangely pacified. 
although sometimes their nature does cause them to lash out to very dangerous to walk amongst them, I'm sure you're fine with your hiding tricks. I've got one last... A veritable question. kingdom stands and awaits. Who knows exactly what it is, but it must be something of the gods. Speaking of the gods. I think some of your friends might be there. Old friends? Hmm. The ones that are not trying to battle the shadow. Perhaps they can help you, Richard. <laughs> He's laughing that he just got money out of you because to point you back at your friends, basically. <laughs> <laughs> the a home of the dragon and elf's shadow. Mm -hmm. Which plane? Yeah. I'm looking for a rod to it. These new gods are difficult. They are not. You were not created in their image. They are ever present. They are difficult to contact and work through intermediaries. They are something different. But the dragon in elf shadow is perhaps a being that you can contact. He's looking at your cloak. Maybe an aspect as they try to shed their weakness. She has a powerful servant that is the general of those armies. That servant does not dwell on a plane, but a thing in between the plane. The part of Yggdrasil that does not burn in search inferno are overrun by shadows that leech and feed upon the ancient being. Yeah, I need to mute out and switch my keyboard too. Does not one of your friends worship Yggdrasil? <laughs> Somebody needs to, you know, assert dominance and steer the ship. And yes, I've got many friends, and they worship many things. Mm. It's all nice to like shadows and all, but it's also nice to, you know, be alive. <laughs> Be alive is good, yes, yes. Ain't no more shadows if they ain't nothing alive. <laughs> is that all you need? Uh, do, does Widget have any th uh, planar rod for Turek? This can be arranged easily. I have one of these somewhere, and he's like floating around the room, like flinging garbage around, looking through. Remember, his, his place is full of trash. Yeah, it's just this. Room is just yeah. junk. You're in the back room where there's some more important things, but apparently he's very messy. Ah, here we go. Going right for for tuning forks is about 2,000 gold. But given that this is my last one and your 
need for it. I'll search you for four. Fine. Hey, that's why this gold piece Dude, is. don't go to Egypt, man. They, you're going to come out with your underwear only <laughs> over your head. And you'll be like, I did you well. You tell he likes you. He's telling you what his markup is and why. <laughs> It's easy come, easy go. Like, it's, yeah. you know... Well, you guys are rich. You, you, you're yeah, acting yeah. this way because you guys are at the end of your dragon horde downtime. <laughs> He's like, which four you, which game. You came here to get four away from some stuff game. for a while, and then hunted dragons and got a giant horde. Like, you, you, yeah. you did not expect coming here to get to get rid of no. no. You should tell him to wrap it up. <laughs> Is there anything else? Would you like an upgrade? My illithid friend is eager to try out some of his new grafts. Is his place secured? Hmm. I'd like a rundown on what's in my fucking ear. Oh. Yes, I did not see it until now. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Do you want him to remove it? What does it do? And what are the options? Mm. I mean, removing it's all fun, but being able to hijack it or utilize it, or, you know. I see. Okay, the, the illithid does come in. <laughs> and, uh... I don't know if that was the token we used, but... He, yeah, but he that's... Does, he does, uh... put you in this dentist chair. They kind of lock you down a little bit. You feel a little bit, um... um I can still verbal command over it. Yeah, you can still verbal <laughs> command <laughs> Uh, you know, that does, his tentacles do touch your face in a way that, that is kind of creepy, but eventually he does pull back your ear a little bit and begins poking at the thing. The, the thing doesn't like to be poked at, and you can feel it trying to dig a little bit deeper. That's one thing we know about elephants, they can get deeper in your head than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> they go <know> deep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they have some sort of conversation telepathically. Ah, I see, I see. Too bad Shabarmar is acting like the intermediary because it's likely going to cost you. We can remove it, however. It has begun to attach itself to your head. You may find that the surgery incurs some cranial damage. Possibly a little bit of brain tissue will have to be removed. You will still be able to function. <laughs> You'll just pee yourself every time you cough. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee reflex. Your diaphragm is now directly connected to your mouth. He is kind of describing that you might have a little bit of... Um, Memory loss or... Int wisdom or charisma drain from the surgery. You'd, you'd have to fix it. Like, you'd have to go see the, yeah. see a priest. Uh, all right. We yeah. could foster the union with this creature. However, in its current state, this creature is not the queen. But. We could try to coax it into becoming a queen. However, a queen will rapidly try to merge further with you. <laughs> Given the chaotic nature of the abyss, you would become something unique. Be unique. <laughs> of 
course, you would then be compelled to seek out the other queen from which this brood spawned. I do what precisely? To eradicate it. Lest they come to eradicate you. I'll be in control. Uh, perhaps. This will happen in stages. We can help you control the rate at which you become one with the creature. Give me a knowledge planes, would you? All right. I am knowing about planes. 29. I'll spend a mythic point for a 30. <laughs> Save one mythic point to run away from this yeah, play. <laughs> oh. 35 will get you some. 33. Oh, uh, we're just now thinking if this thing is demonic, mixing with it does mean that you'd be willingly taking on abyssal corruption, and the end state of abyssal corruption is you become a demon. What is the alignment of the dragon and elf's shadow? Uh, neutral evil. That isn't a lawful evil. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you, would, you would argue that uh, it might be even chaotic evil. Hmm. Like, like she, she's definitely... In she's some not way. lawful and she's definitely evil. Yeah. It's like, because a bunch of the undead is, like, there's a bunch of undead that's chaotic evil, there's a bunch of undead that's neutral evil. Yep. There's very few undead that are lawful evil. Um, this is a... This is one of those things, man. Man, this is one of those things where it's like... Arlen didn't want to blow me out of existence before. He's definitely going to want if I show up <laughs> as a shadow demon. <laughs> hey, God, I got a way to control the shadows. The thing is, it might help with the whole controlling the shadows thing. <laughs> well, like, that's great. We're leaving here's anyways. The, here, here's the thing. Barnabas mm. listed off. He said, there's a bunch of artifacts that demon lords sometimes let, because it's funny, fall into the hands of mortals. And they all screw, like they all and are they curses and destroy over. you. But would they screw you over if you yourself were a demon? I don't think so. And then the sh the sha and then the shadow lantern was an evil artifact that would corrupt you if you were already evil. Then if you're already corrupted, strap in, boys. We're <laughs> we're going in. <laughs> all right, we're uh, all right. One of us corrupts another. <laughs> And that was all bullshit. Oh, I, no, you just use them. You, oh, you need the tome when you're done. <laughs> you will not survive all three stages at once. But my companion here can allow the first stage to bless you. Be gentle with me. It's my first time. It might actually be second, but <laughs> close enough. <laughs> this surgery will cost you 10,000 gold. It will be more for the progressive stages with no guarantee. Is anything ever guaranteed? I, he agree, I, I agree to the price. Also strapped down being like, I, I can't get the money out of you. <laughs> this is a normal negotiating position. No, we normally have a little table with little chits. <laughs> he unscrews one of your hands and brings and brings over one of the tables with the. Okay, but you fork the money over. Yeah. And this weird sort of hostile freaking. Farmar <laughs> floats away with the money. It's like Minority Report with the eyeball surgery. <laughs> okay, there's some 
screaming in between some very heady aesthetic uh, or anesthetic that is that is given to Widget. Um, as you can feel this thing burrowing further into you and changing at the same time. Uh, Widget is gone for this week as he's undergoing surgery. He's going to come back and be like, we, we really need to get uh, Sonny his thing back. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we need to do. <laughs> that's the <a> ticket. <laughs> <laughs> this might make whatever you're asking harder, by the way, if there's any sort of visual <laughs> sort of Mandibles, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a very pronounced jawline. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I need to take ranks in bluff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, corruption stage one. Um, your alignment shifts one step towards chaotic evil. Your choice as to whether it's chaotic or evil. Um, I think we're going to go to neutral evil. Okay. Join me. Quiet you. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to stay on the, like, existence is more important than good. <laughs> like... Yeah. Um, now that I just thought of it, one thing you guys haven't been using has been the book in the um, Mountain Root Temple. Yes. You mm -hmm. may want to sprinkle your downtime with using that book. What, uh, what book? I don't remember which one. Is this the one that gives you a advanced template? For you have two non, humans. For non humans, it, it gets rid of your negative penalty to your oh, release okay. for your race. Right. Uh, Mark's got two humans. Yeah, two humans. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I could use the benefit. That's, that's for freaking sure. <laughs> All right, give me three percentile rolls, um, Adam. The abyss is chaotic. Hundo eighty-five sixty-seven. Okay. I have no idea what are good numbers you on that. Plus two racial bonus on perception checks. What was 85? Was that? What was the other one? 100? Yeah, the other one is. 67. Um, possess sea and darkness ability as if you were a devil. That's just you see everything. Uh, sea and darkness, you can see perfectly in darkness of any kind, including that created by deeper darkness, and it doesn't, it's dark vision without without a range. Please, yes, done. And 100 is you roll twice. Oh. I just take both of them. <laughs> or. <laughs> yeah, 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 you could actually have both if you wanted, and we just call that the, the hundo. Uh, like, because, like, I've already got a weird mutation to my eyes where they're completely black. And I've got like ninety foot dark vision. This is just making like I've got super good dark vision. I've got perfect dark vision. Okay, well now it's basically you see perfectly as if it was a like a bright day in darkness. It's called see in darkness supernatural with a plus two racial bonus to perception traits. Uh, racial traits, uh, chaotic <clears throat> twisting. Uh, no, this is called uh, demonic corruption stage one. Uh, A E or E. Uh, D E M or D A E M. D E M. Yeah. Uh, this one. Stage one. Okay. And the fact that it's like coaxed out underneath this surgery is kind of why you're getting cool benefits from it. Uh, uh, the last thing I need three three percentiles to see what. Goofy, bad, uh, unpleasant thing. <laughs> well, what uh, visible visible trait? Yeah, visible trait happens. Mandibles. <laughs> uh, three, you said. Yep. One. Vestigial. Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. 
Okay. Or 34. Go with that one. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Go with that one. <laughs> oh, there's you have one good. really swollen gonad. <laughs> that are not safe for work. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> the swollen gonad. <laughs> you grow uh, one booby. <laughs> widget now casts no shadow. Oh. Oh, that is weird, man. That's cool. I'm like a weird vampire. He's really thin. It's really good. It's actually really good for sneaking. <laughs> It's also really strange for like um you confuse the shit out of people <laughs> for shadow caster it's like i've utilized i've i've consumed my own shadow for spells <laughs> all right and then widget you seem to uh, i'm going to give you a minus 10 on the perception check as you're stumbling back to the prime material um to see if you notice something in the umber forge that was different from before okay uh, the dc uh, will be 25. and if i get the plus two yeah, you do get this. So this is cool here, by the way. I have a plus two base race bonus. I have a plus two profane bonus. And now I have a plus two additional racial bonus. <laughs> yes. I don't need wisdom. <laughs> I can be unwise and still see things. <laughs> uh, 1d20 plus 23 minus 10. Roll a 2, 15. Okay. I Would find my notice? shoes. Widget doesn't notice anything about the Umber Forge in particular. It's, that's Delta from the last time that you uh, uh, that you were here. Cool. It's not a bad way to spend twenty nine grand. Awesome. I am on the quest to save my people. Okay. Or to be executed the, as a monster. The, the week <laughs> after preparing the room for the ghoul, uh, what are Contessa and Val doing? They're just basically guarding the portal, or is there anything specific that? Uh, they're just guarding the portal. Okay. And half elves don't have a minus to their racial penalty, so she leaves a copy of her report with someone trusted. So the next time someone comes around looking for an update, well, here's your update. Here's a, it's the report that contains the mythic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you share that with your former master, or is it just a thing? No, my former master is a guy in a jar with no scruples. Okay. <laughs> he's lucky he's still a guy in a jar. At this point, half a dozen sorcerers have arrived and joined the priesthood. Welcome, welcome, keep welcome. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, keep track of the number of sorcerers. Half dozen? Because yeah. when we get to 20, you have a troop <laughs> that could be called upon, you know, with diplomacy checks and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> on which sheet is the costs for using the artifact? The book. Well, how much does that? Oh, it costs. Yeah. How much does it, it cost? You have, you have to sacrifice money to it. Oh, okay. It's so like ah, but that's the thing. I ain't got money. <laughs> well, Widget has some because his surgery was cheaper than he thought it would be. Uh, yeah, I'll move this to. Um... I guess correspondence divinations. The Inconabulum primeval. Like, I think I've got it written on, like, Brannis' sheet in, like, a margin, but... Uh, the retrain option to swap racial trait for another racial trait is now open when you study from the book. The ritual to uh, for a created race to remove the negative racial penalty to a single score is five days, 25,000 gold pieces. And there's a mythic path option, ritual, 10 days, 50,000 gold pieces, that allows you to take one half of the advanced simple template as a mythic class power or i'm sorry as a mythic um, path power mm. so barnabas with two rituals you could use the book to gain the full advanced template to give you plus four to how much would that cost it would cost 20 days and a hundred thousand gold pieces to get plus four to all your your ability scores once you have your next two mythic tiers yeah This basically, this book was used. I, I think you were not here by Moradin and the other gods in the creation of their races. It's the cookbook for he, it's cookbook for mortals. 
They were playing Spore, and this was the thing they were using to create their little creatures. <laughs> okay. All right. I will I will peruse. Um, I think yeah, you, you may take the half template a second time, but you must pay the ritual requirements again using another mythic path router. I, I figured advanced simple template, while it is only one ECL, it's, it's worth it's, more. It's, it's, yeah, it is the best one ECL thing. Ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there could be a day where all the characters in, in that like heroes come from wide and far to study from. The Incunabulum Primeval. Okay. Okay. I was just surprised. Right? I thought you guys may have forgotten that, you know. I, I probably tuned out when you said it cost 50000 uh, Br Branos got his penalty removed, and, and uh, Widget was still had other issues going on. But Widget, Widget does want to spend time with that. Okay. So, uh, I, but I have to go through. I have to figure out what he would switch up. All right, so Contessa and Val uh, still guarding the Astral Portal. Yep. Nothing has come through that way. And the Parliament of Clans elects the uh, a, a third member. Sir Mwangal Wyvernfoot wins the next election. Hey, it's your buddy. You suspect because of his connection to the Imperium and to the Church of the Five Faced God that they were able to convince enough of the Dwarven clans to uh, vote in his in his favor. That leaves only one one seat left. Um, so two seats here. No, uh, it just it'll take two two days. Oh, or two two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah, now we're down to um, smaller factions that aren't quite unifying amongst the dwarves. You do hear that uh, Bram Ironfell is still in the running. That's a problem. Has he been seen? No. Because Bredos is like, we're supposed to... He has not been seen publicly. Can I check with the, with the Grand Inquisitor to see if they have actually checked to see that Bram Ironfell, after his glorious fuck up and his sighting of the the, the fire plane, isn't? Yeah, so they, they they've they've been at several events early on when the uh, state funerals were happening that he was at. Mm. So they said, yeah, as of uh, you know. One, two, three, At some four, point, five, someone's five, checked six. to see if he's a doppelganger. Yeah, as of yeah. six to seven weeks ago, he wasn't a doppelganger. Uh, now, have they checked One to see that he's not a this point, When you're being sworn in, there's a little bit of blood going down on the Oh, page. yeah, there, there's <laughs> going to be precautions. Um, but Have they checked to see that he's not just straight up a traitor? They have right. not inquisited the former commander. Okay. Okay. <laughs> This, Brando, Brando, <laughs> this guy. Uh, the Grand Inquisitor does tell Brenos that he's likely going to find the, the last seat because he still has the Iron the Iron Fell clan is still strong with the military tradition of Overlook, and there are enough clans uh, that will uh, right. that will vote that little default like you know. Yeah. He, he also asked, why are you concerned specifically about Bram? He was Bram? viewed in the... Because he fucked up the defense, he moved the troops around, and now he's been sighted in the, sh in the fire plane, contacting the enemy in a way that was unbeknownst to the leadership around us. Okay. Uh, he agrees that he should be questioned um, gently by the first of the three... You himself, or his uh, his uh, his left hand man, uh, when it, whenever Bram is encountered. Yeah, I got the same orders I got before. I was like, yeah. "Oh, that's weird. You should talk to him." Thanks. <laughs> you, you, you get the sense that you you've made enough noise that the Grand Inquisitor uh, of Volcanica is interested in talking to Bram. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, that's that's all I can do. 
I mean, aside from go to the fireplace and stomp everybody's heads in, but <laughs> I, I want my armor. <laughs> All right. Next week, is anyone using the book? Yeah, I don't see anyone put. We we can't. I, I, none of the guys can afford this. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Widget widget might be. Um, okay. I'm trying to like I'm trying to check to see my my leftover funds. Um, and you got a couple I, more weeks. So. All right, the next week, week sixteen of winter. We're near. This is the third last week of winter. Uh, before you guys start training, and then uh, for your 15th level, which you gained while you're doing your downtime. Uh, Agony's up to unknown deeds. <laughs> he's starting to create adamantine weapons. Basically, all the weapons that he carries, he's going to carry now adamantine versions because he has the money to do it. Yep. Cog is in his second week of hardening. Uh, so he's craft, somewhere. <laughs> he's crafting uh, some stuff for Brenos. His simulacra are doing a bunch of rune etching. Sunny um, has commune with Volcanica. And there was also commune with the gods that fell off somewhere for Brenos. Yes. Uh, I don't know when you guys want to do that. How well, about this week? <laughs> when possible. Um, so, Brenos, like, so. For Brenos, what he's looking for is why, like, why is there a rift between the Dwarvish gods, and what am I supposed to be doing? Like, the, what, like, the task for the Dragon gods? Um, I don't think I'm supposed to be following Tyr to the Abyss. Like, that, I don't think that's 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 a little too on the no. Well, <laughs> Widget could so, be your guy. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 do Sunny's first. Yeah. What does he mean by commuting with Volcanica? He wants to know. He wants to make. Deep spiritual contact with Volcanica and know its ills. Like, he wants to understand, like, develop the connection. He wants to understand the, if, if he can can feel what is happening at where the, uh, uh, the, the volcano erupted. He wants to know if there's other issues or sore spots or... Like <laughs> he wants to druid. <laughs> okay. How is he talking to the planet? <laughs> <Who's your volcanic? laughs> Via every bit of magic and potentially mind expanding substance he can find. <laughs> like <laughs> um what's that tectonic So he he does have that, which is like he can talk to the crust um at, at massive distances. Crusty. Eh? Um, give me a second. Uh, so, uh, it's his druid spell. Um, tectonic communion. Uh, it allows like a massive range. Like that's the easiest way to like cover a planet. Um, let me open another tab because I want to keep the gnome traits tab open. Okay. So it's a commune with nature, except it's 100 miles per cash level. So it starts to be like 16,000 mile circles. <laughs> um, and it's... 100, oh, but it, hmm? 100 miles. 100 miles per cash level. So 1,600 miles. 1,600 miles. Yeah, 1,600 miles per circle per casting. So I think we're we might be we might be doing this the, the Lemmy way where it's like I'm gonna use my mythic points to rest a bunch and I'm gonna cast a bunch I'm, of these. I'm, I'm glad that I stayed on the, uh, the Volcanica map. Okay, so you're communing with Volcanica on the terms of tectonic plates and asking it. Hey, what are your doing? problems? <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I want I to know the ills of the, the ills of the world. Like what? What should the druid of Volcanica be doing to serve Volcanica? He is he is pulling his constituents, which he, is Volcanica. It means you just gain facts about. about I, I know, I know. <laughs> so you're gaining facts about communities, dungeons, signs of civilization. Uh, those. Uh, yeah. Oh no! Wait, exists in dark. That, that, that's and blots. Okay. Bodies of water. 
people, animal populations, woodland creatures, powerful unnatural creatures, uh, it, or even general state of a natural setting. So I'm looking for unnatural states or oh, like. And you're, <laughs> you're doing this over the course of 15 days. Yes. Okay, I'm going to chew on that for a minute. I'm, I'm basically saying, Marty, give me some adventure. The same thing I did with Widget. Give yeah. me some adventure. <laughs> Um, see, the, the nice thing is uh, Barnabas informed Sonny about how important it was not to just mages decree everywhere he went, otherwise he'd be mages decreeing along the way as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, we're going we're gonna to skip commune with gods just for a second. I'm going to jump over to Barnabas. Yeah. Barnabas receives a visit And? First of all, who is letting me know he's there? Because Barnabas doesn't answer the door. <laughs> uh, there is a massive purple light that is beaming out of your forehead that wakes you up one evening. Uh, evening. <laughs> <laughs> you could see the face of the glimmer of Geode, or at least the dragon that's representing that entity. Okay. Barnabas. Oh, dude. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> it is time for you to gain converts to our cause. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay, there's a harsh flash kind of above your forehead mm -hmm. and you realize that your the gem that is in your forehead spawns three others that tumble into the the blankets of your bed mm -hmm. you will fill these with the spirits of learned beings or convert three geniuses to our cause very well I look forward to seeing whom you choose to join our collective. I have some candidates in mind. Go with the glimmer. Seek its light. Oh, relief as the, the gem stops projecting onto onto the onto the ceiling of your room and it didn't ask you any probing questions about what you've been up to as of late. <laughs> but there are three sparkling gems. Yeah. Um in your mind it's clear he either wants spirits that can join, like dead people, smart dead people, or to make converts. Living converts. Okay. I will add that's three more then, because he gave me three when we initially met. Yeah, and you haven't been busy. Sticking is, like puppies or some shit. <laughs> what is the definition of a genius in uh, indie land? Yeah, a genius would be probably 18 inter. Right? Follow a Bob, follow a Tim, follow a Jim. Or someone very, like, <laughs> experienced at a craft. Certain, come here, I got a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, you're geotic now. <laughs> right. Oh, he doesn't do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is one possible yeah, solution. Right. <laughs> what, what is Barnabas' reaction to this? Is, Damon, is actually... Damon burst into the room. Apparently, like, the door was stuck while this was going on. Finally, <laughs> Fucking light again. <laughs> it was stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's How smart is Amen? You, you, you did hear him pounding against the door. He, he like probably dislocated his shoulder and tried to get in. <clears throat> it's gone now. All right. You should ask him to grab something off the top shelf with his right hand. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, leaves, he, leaves, he leaves the door slightly ajar unless you tell him to close it. Uh, he leaves it slightly ajar. I let him walk away. Yep. And when he's almost just out of earshot, close the fucking door! 
<laughs> Heyman returns and shuts the door. <laughs> Don't get pissy with me. <laughs> okay, that was Barnabas receiving a visit. <laughs> that is a vision. Uh, the Darbians just working at the bookshop. In their desire to please their master, they sent they, because they open up the bookshop, they send you 50 gold, which are the profits for this week. And um, they found an interesting book. Give me a d10. Okay. This is already just skeptical. What you find interesting and what I find interesting. What are we going to do? Right? I need to touch something else there. Seven. All right. It is a book on nobility. It would provide you a plus one item bonus to knowledge nobility checks if studied for an hour. This is starting at five. Because 103 is much better than 102. <laughs> right. like, this book is amazing. It's got all the heraldry of the land, and like it, it, it's basically imperial, dwarven, elven, and, and like volcanic and uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, heraldry. Okay. Are we volcanoans or volcanicans? Volcanicans. Okay. Volcanic <laughs> Something like that yet. So. Volcanians. Volcani. <laughs> okay, that's what the and yeah, the, they're looking for to one up themselves for Barnabas's approval. <laughs> Widget returns from the shadow plane. What's he doing this week? I don't see anything listed. Uh, I think he's going to... I, I don't know what he's switching, but he's going to be trying to... I think he's going to use the book. Okay, so this is the uh, primeval book? Yeah. Uh, I need to figure out what exactly he's doing with the primeval book, but I, I'd like to use the primeval book. Right. Uh, it might simply be just removing the... Uh, the the penalty to actually, he's going to be removing the penalty to strength, is what he's doing. Uh, Bar Barnabas is going to send an instruction uh, just leave the profits at the store or I don't know, is Brindle at the bank? Uh, the Imperials have a bank. There's probably some offshoot of the Imperial Bank that yeah, he tells him to open up a, a store account there and Yep. Don't send me your fucking money, you idiots. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Barnabas. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> um, this could have been, you're like, that's a lot of money for a short period of time. It could have been like, here's a list of people we need to collect our debts from, and they, yeah. probably, they probably did that. There's probably, with the number of Darbians you have, the bookstore is overstaffed. <laughs> no, he doesn't send all of his okay. drivers. He okay. sends like three people. To... Yeah, they're, they're very industrious. Uh, there seems to be some confusion this week with the elder elections uh, and no decision is made um, as um, there are rumors flying around about the competency of Bram Ironfell and, uh, fucking the, moron. <laughs> and the Inquisition wants to speak to him. Uh, and in fact, it, it stalls that week, uh, and I'm going to say no decision is, is made on the line. And the, the dwarves voted for somebody, and then the Imperials are like, are you sure that's for somebody you want? Yeah, or, or it was just like, it, it was too close to call, no one got majority, continue to do your politicking, and uh, there was no It's Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break here for uh, just a bio break, and... We'll, we'll start the recording uh, back up when we're done. Yep. Okay.